Okay, hey, Chris, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, to hang out with me. We're here at the Ace Expo in Niagara Falls. Yeah. I've been watching it from afar. I've been watching some of your content at NADA. You got a lot of fun down there. Watch Too your much pod- Yeah, it looked like it. I watched a podcast with, uh, recently with Andrew Lemoyne, and yeah. just I saw you over there. I was like, hey, man, I want to grab this guy and take some time to jam with him. This is the Strategy with Jason podcast with your host, Jason, Jason Harris. Harris. So you're you're the director of sales for eBlock, That's right? Correct. Did I say that right? Yep. Okay, cool. Uh, for everybody out there that don't know who you are and kind of how you got started in this business, if you kind of give us that origin story so we can kind of have some context, that'd well, be great. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I started out like many of us do, is actually selling cars. I was an independent car dealer. Uh-huh. Um, really didn't like the retail side of things all that much, uh, but I really enjoyed what the internet had had to offer in the early 2000s it was kind of the wild west it was the wild west back then yeah yeah so you know i started car loans canada in about 2003 mm-hmm. and we were generating leads right across the country um but you know only paying attention to the ones that i actually, actually thought i could sell cars to yeah and you know it was great you know we were delivering cars from Surrey, ontario as far as uh windsor and far north of thunder bay uh at the same time we were generating a lot of leads and it was difficult to manage. So I hired a university student to basically develop some software for me yeah. to help manage those leads. That was way more fun. That was way more <laughs> the, fun. The, developing the product side Yeah, of it. and you know, I saw the opportunity there and actually went to, I'm sure you know Ryan O'Connor. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was in the car business and went to him and he immediately saw the opportunity. So we decided to make a business out of that and out of that grew eDealer. Nice, yeah. nice. And, and it's cool because it got birth from a source of operations and experience. It wasn't absolutely. It wasn't just someone rolling in and saying like, "Here, let me fix some random problem." We're no. trying to solve our own problems. Exactly right. And and from those efforts, you know, the company's coming along. And I, honestly, I think that's probably been, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, probably wouldn't have been the key to your guys' success to this date. Just how you guys have just where you've evolved over the years. And I've got to watch E Dealer and then now E Block evolve over the years. I've been in Canada for the last going on 12 years now so I got to watch you guys evolve over the last 12 years yeah I remember the first WordPress site that you guys started started well, doing we used to like do, we used to do uh, DNN yeah I know before before WordPress yeah. I remember that right you it, know it was uh, it was a struggle because you know I remember we were, working in those sites so yeah <laughs> no, there's a lot of evolution you know great team um, I can't say enough about it and you know I stepped away from the business for you know, four years uh, mm-hmm. Ryan actually bought me out and, you know, it was very friendly and, you know, it was, it was just the right time for both of us. But, you know, sitting on the sidelines and just watching what these guys have been doing with <laughs> eBlock and watching the growth and, you know, that growth that's coming from, uh, you know, the input being provided by the dealer customers. Like, this is their product. Like, eBlock, that auction is, is not, doesn't belong to eBlock. It belongs to the dealers. And you can see it in everything and the attitude that everybody has in this organization. And, you know, Ryan invited me back to be part of it. And it's just, oh, I'm having so much fun right now. Yeah, it, I, I agree with you. I think, you know, for anybody out there that hasn't used eBlock, and I've had the opportunity to really deep dive in the way it's structured, I, I agree with you. You guys built it for the dealer. You know, it, you didn't build it for your guys' for your guys' own purposes. It really was putting the dealer kind of first, and the way you guys develop it, and the experience, and the flow. You know, I, I think it's a, a really, really All fun product. All the changes are, come from dealer feedback, and we're really responsive to that. Mm-hmm. And that was the same thing on the e-dealer side. Oh, you know? that, that's it what was, I always appreciate about with e-dealer is that even early on, just, you'd be able to actually work with them in developing and giving ideas to how to improve the product. Yeah, I mean, we can't get, when you remove yourself from that retail side of it, you stop seeing some of the problems. So you have to take that advice from your, your dealer customers because they're the ones living it and working with it every day. So if you're not if you're not taking that advice, you're not growing. Nope. It's almost like a, a good gangster movie. It's like you you were out and then they, they pulled me back in. Yeah, they yeah, pulled yeah, you yeah. back in. It wasn't right? very hard to pull yeah. me back in. Oh, I wasn't, honest, okay. no. it, wasn't, it wasn't that dramatic as it? It wasn't that dramatic. <laughs> when you see what they were doing, it, it was just, it, it was exciting for me. I felt quite fortunate to be honest with you that they uh you know i'm I'm an outsider now i've been out of the business for four years and that they welcomed me back in i was i was really fortunate so i'm curious about those four years so you get out of the business you come back in what were some of the things you're like myself we get to spend a lot of time within dealerships across the country um what what have you seen what were some of those changes that you were like surprised by and then going oh wow that's still the same uh you know for the most part there weren't a lot of surprises okay other than there are a lot more players in the landscape mm-hmm. going after the digital, uh, the digital dollars from the dealers. Yeah. Like, I was blown away at how many, like, who are these guys? Where did they come from? Like, 
that blew me away. You know, when we started e dealer, there was really not a lot of players in the marketplace. No, and there were three or a handful. I mean, there were yeah. like just a handful of core core people. I, yeah. I remember, and I, I don't know if I should say names, but one of our bigger competitors came from the U.S. and you know, big, powerful company. Yep. And at first, we were a little bit nervous. It's like, oh man, they have so much money. They have you know such a big network. But it actually ended up helping us because what it did is they, they hired this huge sales team, went out and literally uh, <laughs> brought awareness it to the brought, market. It built the value proposition yeah. of, of having a proper website structure and, right. and system. Yeah, so now, now dealers are starting to see what they need and then they call us and it was fantastic. It actually worked well for us. <laughs> we ended up getting business out of that. You know, it, it's funny because you've been in the business long enough to see how certain things have developed. I mean, like today, you know, no, we, we couldn't even imagine running our business without a website. But at <laughs> one point in time, we had a, you're giggling because yeah. you, you know exactly where I'm going with this. Absolutely. You remember, I remember getting we, thrown out of dealerships trying to sell them websites. We had to fucking convince people yeah, yeah. that this is what you needed. I yeah. mean, it, but it's so crazy, like today to even think that it's like at one point in time, we were literally on the other side of the table and someone was telling us, yeah. I do print, I do radio, <laughs> I do television. What the hell do I need this internet thing for? I yeah. got that. I'm telling you, I got that more than once and people have a hard time believing me today. Yeah. And then it went to, well, yeah, I do have a website, but it was, it was brochureware. It was literally um, pictures from their brochure put up on this webpage that was like not interactive at all. Maybe it was one page. It was, yep. nobody knew what SEM was. Nobody knew what SEO was. Like it was the wild west. And, it, it, and that's where I come back to, you know, when our competition came into the country, it helped educate some of these uh, dealers and you know it, it helped us a lot yeah yeah I love the fact that we're talking about your comp that competition and they're literally right across from us right now in a booth oh hey um, <laughs> hey uh, <laughs> yeah I didn't notice that <laughs> that's okay we all know who we're talking about um, <laughs> but but no let's actually you said something and I, I think it actually is important to maybe talk a little bit more about is is those dealer dollars and, and I call it the stew all right. It's like, you know, I only have so much money every single month that I can invest into this pot. And, you know, before that, there was only maybe a handful of players that I would work with to make up that stew. But now there are so many and dealerships can be working not with one or two vendors. In some cases, dealerships, I, I met with a dealership the other day. They're working with 11 different vendors. We added it all up. Yeah, and, and that can be a challenge, too. And, you know, one thing, and, and I said this to my sales staff early on. These vendors come in and, and I hate this line. You only have to sell one more car to pay for this product. Oh my gosh. I, Ven guys are still oh, using that line and it I drives get, me nuts because who are you to tell the dealer what's going to make your product valuable for them? Yeah, it's exactly. Like, they're going to tell you. Yep. And if you're not valuable for them, they're going to ditch you. Yeah. They just come and say, you only have to sell one more car? Drives me insane. And and, I still hear it. And, and, and that's where we end up getting just this monster that's right. stew of just all these vendors. And then the usage of the tools are getting uh, minimal right like i don't know it's only as it's only as good as the execution 100%. Right? i don't care there's a lot of great tools out there yeah. you know some of our competitors have some excellent tools but it's only as good as the execution and that only happens with good support from the vendor side mm -hmm. so you have training um, buy in making sure that you know you don't just have the buy in from you know the dealer principal who's signing the checks you have to have buy-in from the people that have to use it every day because if they're not buying in and then they're going to put it over on the shelf and the dealer's just going to look at the bill every month and say well you know where are the results I, I agree with you and this is where we see this huge wasted dollars and i'm sure you've seen a bunch of dealerships and worked with a bunch of dealerships where there's there's just they bought this one and then a year later they bought another one and then of course that manager left but they kept paying the bills so then they keep you know it's like this overlap 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 of tools to the point where some i don't even think we know exactly what we're hell no. we're paying for or how we're utilizing that um now like i said you've been in a lot of dealerships and i have too you start to see patterns that make a dealership successful and you know it's like the ones that i find and i'm sure you see the same the ones that are successful really have their thumb on that pulse they know exactly what their ROI is on everything that, every expense that they have going out. Mm -hmm. they, they have complete transparency on it. They mm -hmm. know how to read it. Uh, and they're not going to keep it if they, don't, if they don't see that ROI. And execution, 100%. Yeah. You know, they're, they're executing. See, I, I think it's interesting because I'm thinking of all the people that I've, I've, I've had the opportunity to sit down and talk and jam with, right, is, is that, um, like myself, you know, you've been on both sides of the table. 
Uh, so there's not a lot of people I ever get to talk to. You know, I, I was a dealer principal, and you know, now I'm a vendor. You know, yeah. I'm a service provider. I don't want to provide tools, but you know, marketing solutions and video production and so on. Um, but because we've been on the other side of that table, I think our approach is just so much different, you know? Well, because we knew what the pain points were. Yeah. Um, we don't necessarily like being sold to, but we do want to see solutions that are going to solve problems that we have. You know, I'm not looking for somebody to come up with a problem I didn't know I have had. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, now I know because we, we've been on both sides of the table. It, it, isn't that mind-boggling? Um, you know, I know right now, you know, we're thinking of who may be watching this piece of content or who will be listening to this in their car. And, you know, we have, we have dealerships and management and salespeople, but then we also have a lot of vendors will also chime in mm. and listen to this. Maybe this piece is kind of leaning towards that direction of the, yo, vendors, right? Don't go in just to create a problem. No. Right? Solve problems that they have, you know. Listen to the dealer. You know, where are your pain points? Where can I help you? Mm -hmm. You know, coming in and saying, you have this problem. The dealer's like, oh, I didn't realize I had a problem. Maybe it's not a problem. Just because you tell me it's a problem doesn't make it a problem. It's, it's like, shut up and listen. Yeah, shut up and listen. Right? Yeah, I can't tell you, and I'm sure you probably got this too, how many, I mean, I had vendors come through my door and, and literally tell me, like, how to run my business. Mm -hmm. Like, they had the magic diet pill that was going to cure all my problems. And I bet you a lot of those were around changing process too. Yeah. And, you know, sure, I've been in tons of dealerships, and some of them have amazing processes, some processes, some of them have terrible processes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you try to nudge them and help them where you can, but if you're going to come in and say, you have to change your process, they're probably not going to be very happy with you out of the gate, especially, you know, the people that have to implement those changes. You know, be a coach, you know, be a partner. First. First. Right? Because then you're building a Earn relationship off of value. Right. And then... You know, if your product or service fits the need, great. Then it's, yep. it's just kind of a win-win. I, I push vendors to work with their clients or their dealerships or, or to generate and kind of create a goal and objective. Because I find we get into a lot of products and services that we'll buy into, but we don't necessarily have a goal and objective behind hmm. it. It's just a good idea. <laughs> it's sexy. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh, that looks fancy. Yeah. Like, I like that app. That's really cool. That'll make my life easier. That just might not sell more cars. But make my life easier. Um, do you find that dealerships struggle with developing out goals and objectives? I think dealers, you know, have their fundamental goals and objectives of selling more cars and you know doing more service work. Mm -hmm. um, but on a finite level, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Like if I'm taking you on, or if I'm taking this product on, or if I'm taking this service on. What am I looking for as a result? You know, if I'm, if I'm partnering with a dealer, I'm going to sit down there. I'm going to say, these are the results that we're looking for for you. You know, mm -hmm. we want to, you know, we're here to fill this need and hopefully get you to this point. Um, if you don't have that result, how do you know if, it's, if, if, if you're successful? Yeah. You know, we've heard that over and over again from life coaches, from, you know, people that we see in social media that, you know, written lots of books. It's, you know, you have to write these things down. Write these targets down. Write these goals down. Isn't, isn't that funny? We, we, it's, um, it's kind of like, well, you know how it is. The deal. It, it's our sales process. Of course we have a process. Everybody's got a process. Well, let's see it. Where is it? Is it? Can I, can I see it? Can I touch it? No, no, no. We've trained everybody. But then you talk to someone. Like, let's say, like, use car appraisal process, yeah. right? <laughs> you talk to the dealer principal. They have a process. Yeah, sure they do. You talk to the manager. They have a slightly different version of that process. And then you talk to the sales manager and... Well, they also have a very slightly different version of that. And then you talk that. to the UCM, and he's got a guy. <laughs> it's like, yes. It's, it's, if we're not, you know, you guys provide some amazing tools, but if we don't have a very defined process in place, and I, again, I, I see that kind of being a, a key characteristics of some of the dealerships I work with that I know are really successful, is that they very much so document their process. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's important when you're, I mean, we do have turnover in this industry too. So mm. how are you maintaining uh, integrity in your process if you don't have it documented for the new people coming in? Yeah. You know, how do you know that that's been passed along? Like Jimmy just came in and Jimmy's now, you know, a uh, product specialist, but Jimmy doesn't understand the process when it comes to uh, appraising a trade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So outside of process development, um, what other, let's say, key areas they say dealers can work on right now that will, you know, really kind of drive their success? 
outside of process development because I think process is a process kind of touches everyone. Is yeah, there any other? Is anyone. there any specific maybe processes that you you would say like here's where you get some serious ROI if you focused here? Visibility. We, we just we spoke mm. about this at the beginning. Understanding what your vendors are returning for, uh, to you, and making sure that you're not just sending money out out the window. You know, talk about the marketing side of it. You don't have to spend all your marketing dollars. You don't have to. Like, yeah. If you put ten thousand dollars a month aside for for marketing, you don't have to spend it. Let's look at what your results are. Yes. Let's, let's, let's look at the return is, and let's look how much effort you're putting in, you know, after the fact. And then if 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 it's fantastic, go ahead and spend the ten thousand and make sure you're getting the same results on a move forward. That it's not a diminishing return. I, I think that's so key. You're hundred percent right. Our, our our spend is never really direct, dictated by our results. That's why I guess that's what I'm trying to yeah. say. Is the the spend is not dictated by you know what products or what services are actually providing us the results. Well, I've and seen I've been in dealers where you've you've walked in and, and you know yeah we spend X amount uh, a month. Well, how come? Like, where'd you come up with that number? Well, our vendor told us we should spend, be spending that much money. They told you you should be spending you need to be spending this much money on like PPC for instance. Yeah. But okay. but then they, but you know then the vendors get paid based on a percentage the of, percentage yeah. of, and, so and, and, and as do as do we but we will never say like you know you need to spend ten thousand dollars a month start small yeah. measure results until you get to the point where you know maybe it's a diminishing return and then dial it back yeah find the sweet spot it, it's so crazy and I agree with you is that our spend and now we're talking about marketing but it's but like you said it comes down to visibility one of those great places is that it's like the dealership will have a fixed amount and it's the same amount all throughout the year. That's, That's kind of crazy, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I could never understand that, actually. Like our business doesn't necessarily work that way. No. Like we have cycles and periods, you know. It's like, yeah. you know, it, 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 I, I think our spend should be a ratio or a fixed amount against every single vehicle that we're expecting from a goal perspective that actually sell. I like to put a, an ad spend associated with every single vehicle. So yeah, it's I like, like that. Actually, I've never know, thought of it in that perspective. Some months but. I got to sell 80 cars my ad spend will be appropriate to what my gold objective is. There are going to be times of the year I'm only going to sell 35. My ad spend should be then appropriately um, you know, subjective to the actual numbers I'm using. Well, what about thinking of that in reverse, sell. though? In those months that you're going to spend 35, should you spend, or to sell 35, should you try to spend a little more so you can get that lift? There's a good, that's, that's actually a good way. But if, like what you said earlier, if we're spending based on results, then you have to look at what your historic results so, are. So then what we could do is during those, where we know what months we're talking about. We're talking about those yeah, colder months, December. right? We're yeah, we're Christmas. talking about those colder months. It's not, what it is, it's just you focused on maybe the top three things that are bringing you those results versus the six or seven things that you may be doing. You know, look, we all know when it comes to marketing, it's about frequency and also reach, mm -hmm. right? So the more channels I can participate in, all right, at a higher frequency, it... I'm going to have more effectiveness in my message, but maybe during the December time period, you you don't you don't adjust your frequency. Maybe you just pull back on some of those channels, and then of course, when you got the more money, then you expand yeah. outwards. Let me ask you this: mm. You like answering your phone in December? <laughs> Not normally. <laughs> <With the dealers. laughs> you know what the other thing too is? We were, we were talking about this actually recently. Um, I don't like onboarding new clients in December. No, you don't have their attention. God, man, isn't it tough? Mm -hmm. But it's not. It, it, it's it's attention is one thing, but another thing is just like, no matter what I do as a vendor, yeah, it's still a December. It's still December. It's still January. Yeah, it's still February. Like I just can't. Like I, I've almost considered going on vacation for three months. Yeah, I mean, shit. Some of my clients do. Go, so. go up to Brundage skiing. Yeah, no. Well, yeah, we were just talking about that, and in fact, we didn't we didn't know this, but you know, uh, you spent a fair amount of time in Idaho, and and I'm actually from Idaho, so it was cool to jam about that. But but yeah, and I think that's the case. So you know, I think this is that there's been some great content here. I, I think for vendors, we can kind of sum it up. You know, for vendors, you know, be a partner. Exactly. I couldn't put it Listen. any better way. Yeah, yeah, be a partner, sit down, really, like we said, shut up and listen to them and really help them craft and out and develop out the goals don't and objectives. Don't say you only have to sell one more car. Oh, yeah, please, please, please. Please don't say that anymore. If we could just take that saying and just kind of crush it and bury it six feet deep, I think we should totally do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Right? And, and, for, and for dealers, process and visibility, you know, to kind of sum I it Understand up. where your money's going. Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah, understand where that money's going and what those results are actually bringing. 
since we've both been dealers, you know, we don't actually have an issue with spending money. No. As long as the results are there. Like, yeah. Let me tell you, like back in early days of Google PPC and oh, I know. Uh, there's a little thing called Overture if you actually wanted to uh, advertise on Yahoo, because you did back then, you'd actually do PPC on Yahoo. Um, you could buy terms like car loans for 25 cents. Oh, pennies. Pennies. I remember we, my group, uh, when I was working in the Southwest, I mean, we owned the keyword Corvette for the entire southwestern part of the United States for like 15 cents a click. Yeah. You know? Um, now I'll say one more. Uh, one thing I have found interesting, though, is that, and I get a little frustrated with this, is that I still see vendors out there using strategies that are identical to what we were using back 20 then. 20 years ago, 15 years and, ago. And the cost of, of clicks are two, three dollars a click, and they haven't ch- any changed. But, oh, that could be a whole other podcast. That could be like a whole other podcast. I'm thinking about it, and it's like, oh, that's a big conversation. Right? Like, that's, that's like a whole thick one. But yeah. um, uh, thank you, you know, so much you know, for you. taking the time and jamming with me. Um, for anybody out there that's listening and would like to learn a little bit more about what maybe eBlock is and and the, and the system and the offerings you guys have, what's the best place to connect with you? Uh, LinkedIn. Cool. Chris White at LinkedIn, e- eBlock.ca. Obviously, check out the website. Uh, we've got reps right across the country and in the United States. We actually had our first U.S. auction uh, just this week. Cool. How'd it uh, go? Very excited. Very well. Awesome. Very well. Yeah. So we have a great team down there. Uh, so it's exciting times. Awesome. Hey, Chris, thank you, man. Yeah, thank you. Really appreciate your time. Cheers.